it going? All right. <laughs> hey, Mindy. You know we're doing Hi. this press conference style. We're doing this old school, so we want to get as many of your questions in as we can. So let's just get the questions rolling. Hi, um, I'm Julia from Nerds and Beyond. So my question is for you directly. Um, so a lot of your work, whether you star in it or not, um, you always bring a little South Asian culture to it. Um, you know, just beyond the characters' physical appearance. So I was wondering, how do you hope to bring that to Elba? Well, she has an Indian family, um, and I don't know, like, we, I love this opportunity I have now to be able to have representation of Indian Americans, like modern Indian American teens, and I've done in a couple other shows, and Charlie obviously has written with me before, and we just thought it was such a great opportunity. And at the beginning, like, I identify so much with the Velma character, and I think she's a character where, like, I don't know, her ethnicity and the original yeah. wasn't. Yeah, the, I mean, the, yeah, the whiteness of the characters was not, it didn't feel integral to them, except Fred, as we Fred. Fred just felt like a very white person. So, yeah. <laughs> Fred had to be white. Had to be white. He's but the it, whitest know, character in the history of television. Yeah. <laughs> but, when, but when Mindy came to me and said, I want to do this, what, you, you connected with the character saying, ah, here's this girl who's sort of the smart, smart one, does all of the work, doesn't get nearly enough credit, so you connected on that level. So then when glasses. we got glasses, got down sort of haircut. short hair, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So as we got down, it wasn't really until we got much farther down the road where it looked like, oh, this might happen, that we really started to talk about how the character should look and should they be South Asian. And at the time, it was just like, well, why wouldn't they be in this day and age? And so we really... Yeah. And, and when uh, I knew that I was going to do the voice and it's animation, like the possibilities of animation are so, are so big, it's like, well, why not make the character um, Indian, you know, we've, we've been so inspired by, you know, Into the Spider-Verse and seeing these other characters that can embody, like, the spirit of these iconic franchises. And we're like, well, why don't we try that? We love Scooby-Doo so much, and we're going to honor it. So, kind of a long-winded way to answer your very yes. contested question. <laughs> <laughs> Are we calling? Oh, yeah, okay. Right. Hi. Um, I was wondering, is was the series always adult-oriented in nature, and was that a specific appeal to you as opposed to doing a Velma-centric, more kids-centered uh, series? Yeah, oh uh, yeah, sure. So yeah, always we always wanted to do as adult animation. And for me, I loved Scooby-Doo as a kid, but it also scared me. Um, I was scared very easily, but I was interested in kind of taking the combi and the humor of the original and sort of adapting it for older, trying to make it sort of harder jokes and scarier as well. That appeal to me also is this idea. We also, it's such an amazing series, the original series, and I think it's and we love it, and we've loved what people have done with their own versions of it, whether it's movies, and we thought this was a really interesting, fun way to make a different choice, and it felt worth doing, because it hadn't been done before. Sophia Soto with the Nerds of Color came out of with you, and I want to start by asking what was your relationship like with the franchise? Obviously, it's one of the things I with the character, and what made you want to do something centered around her rather than another remake for the First of all, love the name of your site. Thank you. That's when I love you here. Like, identify too much with the name of your site. And um, I think, you know, Charlie said this, but I just, you know, there is not a lot of represent, obviously zero yes. representation of like uh, Indian American girls of color, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s animation, not a, not a lot. And so what I loved about that character, she's the closest to what I could see. Smart, A student, thick glasses that are always falling off, um, and skeptical, and she has a, a lot of these amazing qualities. So as a kid, watching the reruns at that point of the original we do. I felt like, man, I really identify this character. I love that she exists. You know, her, she's not like traditionally gorgeous or anything. She just helps the gang out because she's so smart. And when I joined Warner Brothers and they, they had access to all the Hanna-Barbera canon, it was like, I was instantly drawn to that. And so was Charlie. Okay. So, Charlie, you sign up in a white sweater? Hi, Ashley Starring. Hi, Well, Charlie is the showrunner and creator yeah. of the show. Um, honestly, I approached it because it's not for kids. I do like doing shows where there's Indian characters in it and we show Indian families and not the sort of traditional way of losing them in the past. But um, it's not for kids, but I hope maybe when my daughters yeah. 
like in college. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> when you guys it. see it, you'll understand. Yeah, but, but I, you know, I, I have kids and I really did. I was, I'm very interested in the family dynamics and just, again, because for me, the whole, one of the big mysteries of Scooby-Doo, the original, is how did these four very different people come together? Like, what really drew them together? And, what sort of kicked it off and and you know how they were made by their parents and that's such a trope in teen dramas especially today as sort of teens paying for the sins of their parents and so I really wanted to kind of fold that into this series as well and we're so lucky because we get we have this amazing guest star cast who play all the different parents you know people like on the sites Cherry Jones and they're playing Fred Daphne's and Russell Peters is playing um, Aman, who is Your father. Uh, Velma's father, and he's just so funny. And we actually haven't gotten to see that dynamic, like Indian dad, like Indian American dad, and yeah. Indian daughter. Um, so that is just, it's really fun to show those dynamics. Just for a note, that casting information is embargoed till 11 a.m. Our my God. today. So, <laughs> sorry. Right here. Sorry. No, sorry. No, no, it's coming out today, but just. Uh, <laughs> I know. So you both have kids. I mean, even though this is more, this is more of an adult center show, did you, have you shown the originals to them to get an idea of how they would react? Because kids, they are more savvy, I think, than we were about a lot of things. Yes. Did you use them sort of a petri dish? Hmm, this could work. Or what, what I, does and doesn't. I tried to get my kids to watch, because when we, we started doing this, I went back and rewatched um, just the really, I kind of tried to stay true to the very original Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? And um, so I went back and watched a bunch of those. They don't move as quickly as you remember moving. Like for kids today, as you're saying, kids being much more savvy and sort of used to kind of doom scrolling and things changing, they sort of, they're much moodier. And so I couldn't get my kids as hooked on the reference material as I would have liked, but definitely thought about them in terms of references and making the show feel modern, like these kids are modern teens. And my, done it for my daughter loves it. Um, I think she loves the animation style. Um, and so she, I mean, it's such beautiful work. I mean, it's like, from 1969, but it's still so beautiful. It does look good, yeah. The yeah. iconic colors. I mean, I think a lot of kids' animation now is um, they're, they don't have different maybe priorities. I guess it's like you know. And so my daughter absolutely loves it. It's a, she's four, so a lot of it is over her head, and some stuff is actually scary yeah. for her. But I always tell her, I'm like, like Velma, you know that you know you're skeptical. This isn't really like ghouls. It's always like a. It's always like a corrupt businessman who's like trying to yeah. get money. But can, but can you be scarier with this since you're going for an older one? Oh, we oh, yeah. certainly try. Uh, you know, we really, I wanted to lean in when we were talking about the animation style, where we wanted to evolve it in a way that would, you know, help um, really do a more modern twist on the, on the horror aspect of it. I'm going to go way in the back with the blue shirt on. Sure, I think what you asked was what kind of crimes we'll be seeing. I think I missed the second part. Uh, the second part was like, oh, that's a great question. Um, so this is a scary show with murders. <laughs> and I think that, that was one of the things we liked about it was these high school kids being really, really brave and having to deal with something very scary and not something that I think we've been inspired with yeah. a lot of more scary teen shows of late, which is why the show is for adults. Um, and it's also tackling a lot of what teens go through in modern high school life. Obviously, I come from that sort of tradition with some of my other shows and that was really interesting to me entirely. Like, what do girls deal with? It deals with like popularity, being an outsider. Um, obviously, the cast, you know, comes from very different socioeconomic backgrounds. You know, the the characters do. So, like, what does that look like now? And that's something that we could kind of only tackle in an adult show, but yeah. it seemed really interesting and rich. Interesting. And in terms of the crimes being a little bit more intense too, it, it just felt again another question I always had about the original was every week in the original they are chased by you know seemingly monsters but criminals it feels like their life is in danger every single week and yet week in week out they keep doing it and it's seemingly for free so it was sort of like <laughs> what what drove what did they go through in high school that was so bad that kind of pushed them to want to do that um so we just you know we really kind of amped up the um suspense and fear level of the crimes that they're investigating 
Uh, with, with the it's a more DeLorean-oriented show, we see Dalmas changes as well. With other characters, we see changes in them. Uh, from the traditional, we we'll learn more adult things that's more violent. We're gonna learn like Scooby snacks or edibles or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fun of the show has really been taking, um, you know, the iconic pieces, either the sayings or, you know, the sweater or whatnot, and, and trying to give origins to all of those, everything, you know, that really are the iconic pieces of Scooby-Doo, and give them, imbue them with meaning. And so when, you know, um, when Velma, why does Velma say jinkies? Like, that's a, that's a big thing that we wanted to lean into. And, and we do the same with all the characters. Like, what, how does, you know, we call him Norval in our series. Well, when does he become Shaggy? You know, it's, that's, that's one of, was one of the real appealing things of doing this project. Right, you wait. That, yes, blue shirt. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Would it be more as a storytelling I think so. I mean, I, you know, it's certainly adult, um, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's like the most adult show that you've ever seen. You know, I don't think we, we again, we wanted to be respectful to the IP. We didn't want to say, ah, oh, look what we can do with these people and, you know, kind of put them in, in what might be a little uncomfortable where you're going to be like, Ugh, I don't I don't know if I want to see Velma or, or Norval or, you know, Fred doing that. Um, but it's certainly, I think, in the way we were able to tell stories and what we were able to tell stories about, you know, that a little bit off mystery, just delve more into, you know, the mysteries of high school life. Yes. For instance, like we don't really have the characters, they don't like swear that much. No, not and really. So, and so it's really just like the situations that they're in because it's geared towards adults can be more of like, what do those, what do teens who are, you know, 15, 16, 17, like, what are those sort of urges, you know, which you couldn't have in a show that was for younger kids. And also the kind of like references and the things that are going on, whether it's like pop culture and, you know, Charlie is so good and the writing staff is so good at pulling from those things. Um, and I think that's really where it shines. But it's not like we wanted to like, shock you shock with what you. we were making these characters do. That wasn't, that, that wasn't. was never the MO. Yes. Well, so we'll start, we're, we don't, you know, we, yes, we're very aware of the story and um, I think it's just great that you can tell these stories about Velma that have, you know, been um, talked about forever, but now you can actually address them in all the different iterations of Velma. In our, yeah, without Sorry, giving away, yeah, yeah, away yeah, we don't want to give away, like, any spoilers about that her, episode. Her self-discovery is a really big part of this series. Yeah. And one of the biggest, I think, appeals to Charlie and I about doing this is when we started working on the show and Charlie started writing the first script, it was like, that's a big part of it. We don't want to ignore it. So it's interesting to people. She's an icon for young gay women. And I think that's really interesting to us. So her figuring it out is uh, a big part of the show and why it's really fun to do. Thanks. So how would you compare um, the show, like for example, like does it have like a Harley Quinn HBO Max feel or like an X-Files but animated type feel? Ooh, X-Files but animated is good. I'll say the mysteries are chilling in this. <laughs> and uh, you know, you, I've never even told you this, but like when I think of like Veronica Mars, which again is a, another amazing show about like real mysteries with real stakes, it reminds me of a lot of that. Yeah. Harley Quinn is a show, we we love that show, we're big fans of the writers on the show. I think even that is more adult, it's yeah. like such an awesome show, it's super raunchy and really cleverly written. I think our show is less, I think, adult than that show. Um, but again, Harley Quinn is a very different kind of character than Velma, so it seems more perfect. I'd say it splits the, the difference between those two references that you mean, Harley Quinn and sort of animated X-Files. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, any any reference to X Files? Yeah, what yeah. a great show. <laughs> yeah. um, so, the original Scooby Doo, while very scary, was also really funny, but within the chaos that kind of happened. So, I wanted to know do you guys kind of follow those same beats with the comedy, or where do you find those more lighter moments? 
Hey, first off, your shirt is the best shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, Willem Dafoe is like, <laughs> <laughs> I the best. Yeah, he's the best. Yeah, it's a, an excellent shirt. Yeah, I, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think we certainly try to, it, there are at times where we make a real specific nod to the kind of slapstick humor of the original. Um, and then I think the writing style in terms of the banter between the characters is perhaps a little bit more, definitely more heightened than it was in the original, more in keeping with how we write on a lot of your shows. Yeah. Um, uh, but we certainly tried to make it, you know, as a kid I thought Scooby-Doo was hilarious and scary, so I wanted to create a version that I, adult Charlie, would think is both hilarious and scary. Uh, Hey, oh. Hey. <laughs> uh, you keep hearing the word adult oriented Scooby Doo, right? So, does this mean like when we unmask the villains now, it's like college debt and midlife crisis <laughs> now? <laughs> it would be a good idea. I mean, we, we do lean into, like, you know, I think we do explore, um, and especially now we just are finishing writing season two and we kind of get into some larger ideas like that as we go on in the in the in hey, the season. Are we allowed to say that we're ready yeah, to that's season? Not <laughs> All right. It's wildly successful. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, hey, we're bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should go. We should go. Right. Elmo was so awesome that it got renewed yeah. before the premiere. Yeah. yeah. We're, um, yeah, but to answer your questions, Please no, I think there's secret. like, yeah, yeah. Um, where were we? Yeah, so to answer your question, it was, no, I think that we don't, it's more, I think it's just the level of the crimes are more brutal, and you'll see that in the, in the premiere. Cool. How do you balance bringing issues that teens are facing now into a prequel that's for a show that started in the 60s? Creative license. I mean, <laughs> you, you just, you know, we thought about it. Ah, oh, should it be a period piece? Should we throw it in the, in the 60s and early 70s? And I think we just decided that we, you know, kind of taking a nod from Riverdale um, and all the Bur great Berlanti shows, um, just setting it now as if it's happening now. I remember when uh, when Netflix wanted to do Never Have I Ever, my show. They wanted it to be set in the 80s and 90s because that's when I grew up. And there was just something about we were really committed to having a staff that was super diverse and young, and we kind of wanted to reflect that experience now, and it also felt like it was would make it less like a facsimile of the original version. And it was a fun challenge, like to have them, like they have cell phones now, it's diverse, like, and people come from different backgrounds, and uh, I think that helped it, helped us make that transition, was by modernizing it, which is Charlie, Charlie's decision. Hi, David Mann. Uh, Bill has had very different iterations with different personality quirks. What unique traits for the personality you bring to the show? Do you want me to go? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think she's a, so they're younger, right? It's an origin story. So I feel this Velma is a little bit more skeptical. I think she's a little rougher around the edges. I think she really is starting as a real outsider at school and is just kind of attacking. Um, you know, hypocrisies around her a little bit more pointedly. Um, I think her home life is not great. And so, yeah, she's a little bit more, I don't want to say angsty in that she's dark and brooding, but she certainly is very free flowing with her comments and judgments about other people and what's going on. Mindy, that's incredible. Thank you. You look amazing. The shorts got real short when I sat down. <laughs> and so uh, I was feeling self conscious, so thank you for saying that. Sure. I'm going to say thank you, although I don't know if different light is necessarily possible. But thank you. I, I love um, the projects that I've been able to work with. I love being able to take these characters that were on the periphery and making them front and center. Um, I've just been so lucky that we have like partners in HBO Max that are really excited. Not everyone would necessarily be comfortable doing this, and we feel so lucky that, you know, that Warner Brothers Animation was open to this. And again, like, we've seen it done in other shows, so I'm psyched that we get to do it with like young Indian women. So, thank you. 
both of you have worked together on projects in the past. Did it feel good to like collaborate again on this project? I can only speak for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, working with Mindy, I've really worked with you since the even office. the office, and yeah. it's you know been the highlight of my career. It's just such a joy to write for Wendy, to write with Mindy, to come up with ideas, and it's uh, yeah, it's incredible. It's so fun to. Well, I've seen Charlie in person in the past three years four times. Yeah, it's been so, a lot of zooms. A lot of zooms, but um, to have somebody who so gets my voice and to be able to do these long recording sessions with him. I mean, he has such an amazing pedigree before he, before he even did The Office, where he was like a star writer, he's on The Daily Show, and um, and then Saturday Night Live um, forever. So Charlie is just like one of these rare people where he's such a hard joke writer, but then also, I mean, I think honestly, just gets the female psyche and knows how to write for women. And I think a lot of it's because you have a daughter and a wife and you have such great relationships with them, but uh, it was such a dream that he was excited to do this show. So I feel so blessed. I feel so blessed, I Whoa. just said. <laughs> what am I saying? I feel you just got it back on track. <laughs> I was honestly excited because this was the first time where I wasn't playing a creature. <laughs> I, I, you know, in Monsters at Work, I play a creature inside out. I'm playing a, another creature in emotion. So it was great to be playing uh, a young woman. And it was kind of nice to get direction from Charlie, you know, to make sure this didn't sound like Mindy Lahiri. It doesn't sound like Kelly from the office, like try to do something else. So that was a kind of unique challenge for me. Um, and I hate challenges. <laughs> so uh, it was, I, you know, it was great to be able to do that. So we're going to have one more question, then we're going to have photo calls so you guys can take pictures and have our photographer come up. And I have to reiterate the information that was given today. <laughs> yeah, we really fucked up. Yeah, it's please, on me. That is not, nothing is confirmed. So, so please, <laughs> thank you. So, last question. Um, so over the last year, a couple of years, we had never have I ever we see a mother a daughter uh, South Asian relationship. Uh, Miss Marvel in recent years with Disney, um, really good father and daughter relationship in that. What can we expect from Velma? I think you said Russell Peters is playing your father. So yes. uh, funny man, but uh, what's that relationship like? We usually see tend to see some sort of struggle with South Asian yeah. uh, children and their parents. Well, honestly, and I'll let Charlie yeah. speak to this more because he was obviously the writer. But I have to say, I've been able to show these mother, even grandmother, teenager dynamics in a lot of my shows that are in American, and I was so excited that the parent, that her primary parent, and there's some fun mystery around that, so I won't say too much else, is her father, and the father doesn't have an accent. He was like born and raised in the United States, and that's a dynamic I haven't seen before, and um, it's one of my favorite things in the show. He's such a gifted comedian, but I think we're now getting to the point where like, I'm old as hell, but there are people here, you know, Indian Americans, whose parents are Indian Americans, and we wanted to reflect like really what's happening now. We've seen the trope of the like, and it's, it's not necessarily true, but it's like my experience, a lot of experience, a lot of other people in their 30s and 40s of having immigrant parents and the clash between that, and we haven't seen this new thing. And so that's really exciting. Yeah, and it's been a lot of fun to write. I mean, what's great about Russell is he's, um, he has such a light touch that, and he has such a great voice that he can be very gruff and stern and just kind of rolls his eyes at Velma a lot. But it comes across as sweet and endearing. It, um, it, it really is. And it's, so that's a great dynamic to play. And we don't fall into this trope where he's like, you have to be a doctor. Like, they're just yeah, trying no, to get by. They're not from, like, a wealthy family. They're just, and it's um, it's just a unique dynamic that we're, I'm so proud we get to tell. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming. Those of you, I know there's a few of you who need to pick up wristbands. My colleague Matthew is out there and he has the wristbands for you for the panel. So I'm going to move these chairs for the night, too. Yeah. And then I love that you get your... Yeah. 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 Yeah.